What would it look like if everyone in your church was passionate about the Great Commission? I want you to think about it for a moment. What if the people in your ministry context, whether youth ministry, women's ministry, small groups, what if they actually felt empowered to reach their friends, their neighbors, their classmates, their coworkers for Jesus Christ? What would your church look like today if each one reached one? What if each one reached two or three or four people for Jesus? What kind of growth would that bring to your church? What kind of excitement would that produce? What kind of confidence would that create within your ministries? I wanna share with you today some practical tips for getting your people engaged in the Great Commission. But before I do, let's start with the problem. Ed Stetzer says that Satan has a simple mission, to keep lost people lost. And among numerous strategies, one of his favorites is to keep Christians convinced that ministry must be left to professionals. But to reach the nearly 7 billion people on the planet with the gospel, Christ intends to use all believers in the work. Satan attempts to convince believers that only exceptional people used in exceptional ways will accomplish God's mission. He would love for us to think that only the elite of leadership can be used in God's mission to save souls. But God's mission is for all Christians. Extraordinary people for God are simply ordinary people who are willing to be used. The problem is that the modern church today believes a lie. And the lie is that ministry is for the professionals. Ministry is for the guys and the gals on stage with the microphone. Many congregations believe the lie that it's their job to watch and that it's our job to minister. You and I, though, we know that Jesus has a much bigger vision for his church. The Bible teaches the priesthood of all believers, that you're a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, that you've been saved to proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Every Christian is a minister. And here's the reality. Jesus isn't looking for professionals. He's looking for willing souls. And during his earthly ministry, Jesus lamented that the harvest was plentiful, but the laborers were few. The first batch of laborers that Jesus sent into the mission field were regular people with regular lives. He used fishermen and tax collectors, political zealots, and many others with such basic jobs they weren't even listed. They were uneducated commoners. This was the group Jesus hand-selected to change the world. This was the group that Jesus chose to lead the greatest movement in human history. Now you may look out on a Sunday and see a group of regular guys and regular gals, but I'm here to remind you today that Jesus Christ specializes in regular. The 12 changed the world and they changed it without seminary degrees, without wealth or fame or prestige, without viral videos or social media or YouTube. They were very ordinary people capable of very extraordinary things. So here's my question. Are you empowering your people to minister or are you enabling complacency? Francis Chan says leaders have become like personal trainers. They run on the treadmill while their trainees sit and marvel and then they wonder why their people aren't developing. I believe that it's time to put the weights back into our people's hands. It's time to teach the people under our care how to flex their ministry muscles. They cannot get buffed through osmosis. They cannot get buffed by watching. They must pick up the weights. They must engage. And only then will they see the abundant life that Jesus has planned for them. But to help, we need to have a strategy a simple strategy for reaching and growing people. So if your church is looking for such a strategy, then check out the video called The Master's Plan for Evangelism. But until then, remember, Jesus only needed 12 to change the world. How many people are in your church? What if each one reached one?